If I told you that a language existed that had the syntax of Python, the extensibility of Lisp, and the speed of C, you wouldn't believe me. That's where Nim comes in. Although Nim was created all the way back in 2008, it only had its 1.0 release four years ago in 2019, making it feel like a pretty modern language. Nim can really do it all, from self-documenting code to compiling to JavaScript and C for web apps and native desktop apps. Nim's syntax is extremely modern with a huge resemblance to Python. If you like languages that take advantage of whitespace, you're going to love the syntax of Nim. At first glance, it just looks like a statically typed Python, but it's not entirely the same. To declare a variable, you use the var keyword, followed by the variable name, and if you want, the variable type. Similar to languages like Python and Rust, types are indicated with a colon and then the type. Nim also has type inference, so the types are not always required. Immutable variables can be defined with the let and compile time constants with const. You can declare multiple variables at once as well by indenting the declarations after var. Nim has many primitives that you may expect from it, such as ints, floats, strings, characters, and bools. If you want to make your code look even more complex, Nim allows you to create custom types. For example, I can create a person type using both a tuple and an object. Nim also supports generics, where types can be used as parameters. And this is just a subset of its larger support for metaprogramming. Functions in Nim are called procedures, fine with the proc keyword. Parameters in the procedures must have types, as they increase overall performance. Procedures have a neat feature that allow them to have an implicit result variable. Anytime you have a non-void function, there's going to be a return value. Nim takes advantage of this by implicitly creating a result variable at the start of the procedure. The benefit of this result variable is more for looks rather than functionality, as result is always returned, even if you don't write return. It allows for what in my opinion is much cleaner code. Now, its syntax is great, but Nim as a language can do much more than what you would initially expect from it. For starters, it offers support for metaprogramming through macros. A macro is just a function that's executed at compile time and changes the Nim syntax tree. Basically, they allow you to extend Nim with more Nim. To see the abstract syntax tree, just use the dump tree command. This gives the list of statements and the commands for a statement. Idents are identifiers which are similar to the tokens for the language. There's also literals, and in this case we can see that the int literals point to the exact integers and string literals point to the Nim string. Statement lists can also be nested, as there's a substatement list inside the for statement. After we have the abstract syntax tree, it becomes much easier to extend from it and transform it to our needs. An example of using the macros could be making a product function for arrays. There's usually a sum function for arrays which just add up all the elements inside an array, but not a product function. However, using nim macros, we can change that. Here, we create a new int literal node, and for every item in the array, we multiply our existing product with the item. As you can see, we also don't need to return anything as the implicit result return takes care of it for us. If we didn't want to type out everything with full access to the abstract syntax tree, we can use quote do, which is less verbose and allows us to type out our code literally. Nim's utility extends beyond metaprogramming and can be seen in its compilation. Nim can compile to languages such as C++, JavaScript, and more, meaning your Nim apps can serve as both web apps and native desktop apps. The code isn't meant to be readable and is highly optimized, designed to be deployed rather than edited. However, it does work how you would expect it to. Because JavaScript doesn't have pointers and manual memory management, the Nim code you write can't have that either. Basically, anything that isn't in native JavaScript can't be in the Nim that's compiled to the JavaScript either. Which means you can say goodbye to threading, 64-bit integer arithmetic, casting, file management, and the list goes on and on. Nim does have your back and offers modules in the standard library that cater toward JavaScript if you need them. If you want to do more powerful operations with Nim, you can compile it to C++ and take advantage of their full range of libraries. There's almost no end to how many things Nim supports or can indirectly support due to its cross-compilation. One of the things I find the most interesting is its garbage collector, or lack thereof, depending on the work you're doing. With Nim, you can disable the garbage collector or change the type of memory management the compiler uses. By default, Nim uses a reference counting based garbage collector, similar to how Python works. If you don't like that, you can just switch it to Go's garbage collector or Mark and Sweep garbage collector, or even just no garbage collector at all. You can even go as far as to edit the garbage collector that's currently being used to better fit the needs of the program. I really don't know in which situation you need to edit the garbage collector, but if you want to, you can. As you might already be able to tell, Nim's compiler is extremely powerful and it can do a lot for you to help you as a developer. It's pretty batteries included. However, you can mix things up if you want as well. 
If you want docs for your code, the compiler has you covered. Cross-compilation or debugging, the compiler has you covered there as well. There's so many features that the NIM compiler has to offer, all of which are really useful. And if you want to learn more about the compiler, I've left a link to the description about some of the compiler flags and what they do. Like any modern language, NIM has a package manager called Nimble, making it quick and easy to use external libraries. If you sense a pattern, NIM is pretty different in a lot of ways, and the package manager is no different. Nimble is a decentralized package manager, which means you can install packages directly from a URL and not just from a list of packages that are contained inside Nimble. It has a lot more features, but that one in particular stood out to me and is pretty cool. I know other package managers have similar features, however, Nim is slightly more expansive in which packages it can take. Nim is extremely fascinating and has a lot of features that I think if you guys have the time, you should definitely go check out. Let me know what you guys want me to talk about next time, and I'll see you guys later.